Howdy folks. So about uh, four or five months ago, I started an experiment where uh, I took a bunch of these really, what I consider to be the cheapest possible candelabra LED bulbs you can find on eBay. I bought a lot of them. Uh, some of them were warm white and some of them were cool white. And I wanted to sort of uh, just sort of test these um, in uh, a bunch of different scenarios. So I put them in a bunch of different fixtures throughout my house, uh, some in really humid and hot environments, some with different duty cycles, um, different power cycles, everything. Uh, and I'm tracking them to see how well they do. Um, they were so cheap, pretty much, that uh, given the 40 watt incandescence they replaced, uh, they would uh, pay for themselves in just about six months or so. Uh, so it really was pretty low risk. And anyway, within about three months, one of them failed. Um, and uh, I made a video about that. And it turns out one of the LEDs had um, had gone open. And because they're all series strings, just a capacitive dropper, um, the whole light went out. And uh, I noticed that it, it had actually been flickering a little bit uh, before it had failed in the, the days leading up to its failure. And originally I thought, you know, this is just, you know, me blinking or something and I can't tell it was incredibly quick and incredibly random and you'd never you know you'd stare at the light and it would never do it but only when you looked away it would do it it was one of those kind of things uh, but only after the light failed did I realize that it indeed was uh, the bulb failing so I've had another bulb in that same fixture do the exact same thing um, this is a warm white and this is in my bathroom fixture so where it's extremely humid and hot all the time and has a very uh, a lot of on off cycles um, it's uh, it's the same place as the last failure um, and this one has been doing the flickering and it's been getting worse and I actually managed to catch it in the act so I know it's exactly this bulb uh, none of the other bulbs in the fixture are doing it there's five in the fixture right now this is the only one that's doing it so I wanted to just analyze this before it fails because it's gonna fail within the next 24 to 48 hours I'm pretty sure um, so I just want to see if we can see signs of the failure mode um, visibly now uh, in the LEDs themselves, maybe, because uh, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same failure, one of the LEDs is failing, and uh, maybe we can actually find the failing LED before it fails and just see what its characteristics are when it's in this sort of uh, semi-failed mode right now. So let's uh, see if I can get this one open. This one doesn't look like one that I've taken apart before. Um, now it was just on, so they do have a bleeder resistor, but I'm gonna just short those out just in case because I do not want to get bitten by this it's very difficult to get this in there yeah I actually can't get my screwdriver in there okay it's fine it's fine it has a bleeder resistor I trust the bleeder is actually there so uh, power supply is pretty much fine we can be pretty sure of that um, if it was the power supply we'd know now getting the plastic cover off can sometimes be a, a bit of a bitch on these because the circuit board is oversized slightly so I find that rotating them oh I think I just yeah I just lifted the pad on that cap that's wonderful shit well after several minutes of trying uh, it didn't go as expected uh, but I was finally able to prize this out of the plastic housing. Uh, this I don't know how they got it in here, um, but that was an amazing amount of force I had to use. Um, I ended up having to lever it out from this hole in the center here, which is probably what I should have started with. But uh, in the process, I managed to completely tear off the uh, the main the main cap here. Um, one of the solder joints obviously must have been a cold joint because I managed to pull it straight out. Uh, right there and the other one uh, I managed to tear the whole pad off uh, and the way they've done the board you can't you can't really see it very well but this gives us a little insight uh, there's one trace which runs to this pad here which is obviously for a smaller footprint of, uh, of a dropper cap and then there's another separate trace which runs over here to the uh, uh, the uh, discharging resistor here so I'll uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to repair this if I if I had to, um, but uh, since it's going to fail, I'm probably just going to uh, repair it by using the base of the other lamp that I have, uh, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. 
So uh, the first thing I did was I looked at all of the uh, the LEDs, um, and on the face you can't really see anything at all. It looks to be fine, uh, and you go around the edge, and they all look the same, with the exception of this one right here. Uh, this LED has got the same exact characteristic um, dark patch right where uh, right where the die would be, right next to the die. So. I thought we would uh, try and light this thing up and see uh, see what happens. So I've got out my bench supply here, and I have uh, my meter here. Let's see if I can get this all in shot. This could be a little bit of a challenge. So. What I wanted to see, first of all, was what is the lowest voltage that the uh, the non-defective LEDs will light at. Um, so the polarity is kind of uh, annoying because every strip is back back to front from the others. Um, but at about 2.4 volts, just under 2.4 volts, we can get one of these LEDs uh, to light very dimly. If I can do this with one hand, I can adjust it down to uh, absolute zero. I think this is, I think this is the best I'm going to get. Um, this is incredibly difficult to do with uh, just two hands, but uh, you can see with these operating at probably a normal what what would probably be normal brightness around three three point two volts or so. Uh, that's about how bright they are. And as we drop it down to about 2.5 uh, 2 volts there, uh, 2.4 volts, they get a little flickery at the lower end, but uh, the lowest that I can see it at, especially after just being blinded from that uh, full brightness, is somewhere around 2.3 volts, pretty much. Yeah, they pretty much disappear completely at 2.3 volts. So if we test this one, which is sort of on its last legs, I'd say, you can still see it at the exact same uh, at the exact same voltage. It still lights. Um, so there is really no way that you could, you know, run a test by hooking it up to a power supply and uh, seeing if it if it fails. Now the one thing that you will note though is if I run these LEDs, the good LEDs, at 3 volts, they're very bright. But if I run this LED at 3 volts, it's very dim, comparatively. Um, so I know the camera's going to do uh, auto exposure, but um, there's a massive brightness difference there. So you can clearly tell that uh, it is definitely, uh, definitely got some low resistance path or something in it. Um, it's probably the internal die is possibly not getting the full three volts. Um, but if that were the case though, I would expect it to light, at, it, would, it would need a higher voltage to light. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with this LED actually. Um, but uh, yeah, the low end doesn't, doesn't tell it, but the high end definitely does. And uh, I wonder if I can get it to flicker on camera, just that one LED, see if I can get it to, uh, come on or off. Unfortunately, I don't know what the running operating voltage of this LED would normally be in the series string. Um, I never me measured these bulbs when they were actually plugged into the mains, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is a thermal issue, like if I have to wait for this to heat up. It generally will start doing it within, you know, 30 seconds or so. So. I'm going to get it up to about 3.2 volts or so, 3.2, 3.3, so sort of about there. That's probably the highest I'd expect them to be running these LEDs at. Any higher than that is uh, a little odd for a white LED. So I've had it running for about a minute or two now, and uh, I cannot say that I've seen it flicker once, which is kind of unusual, but... Uh, it's possible it has something to do with the uh, the the operating conditions this thing normally runs at. Uh, it's obviously not getting as warm as it normally would um, because of course the thermal mass of the, the board is shared between the three LEDs. 
Um, so I'm not sure if it's a, a thermal thing or not. Uh, again, I don't know what the, the voltage of these are, but uh, I, I can't get it to fail, but uh, it's kind of interesting nonetheless. If I get rid of the power supply, sort of curiosity, um, my diode tester in this multimeter cannot measure the forward voltage of these. I think it's a two volt tester. Um, if, if that's my best guess anyway. Um, and it measures nothing across these LEDs. And I want to see if it doesn't measure anything across the failed one. I have a nice little black dot in my vision now from staring at that LED. I probably should not have done that. Even though it was not nearly as bright as the others. Uh, and anything in the reverse direction. So uh, it still tests with a forward voltage greater than two volts. Uh, sorry about that. And in terms of resistance, um, this this could be a bit interesting. So regular LED, pretty much open in that direction. Uh, failing LED, um, significantly lower. Um, so we're looking at like an order of magnitude lower. So it used to be so about 25 meg on the good LED, about 2 meg on the uh, the failed LED, and uh, just reversing that out of curiosity. So we get open and yeah, so we also get some reverse current flow as well. Um, measuring about 7, 7, 7 and 8 meg ohm in the opposite direction. So that's interesting. So there's obviously obviously something in that die has gone uh, gone lower resistance, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't say low resistance because I mean 5 meg is still not bad, but there's definitely some carbon or something in that die um, that's conducting and obviously once that bridges across um, I think it just blows out at that point and it goes open. Um, if it went short, that actually might not be a terrible thing. All the other LEDs would just come on much brighter. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, fortunately it is what it is. Now, I had another one of these fail. And basically the way that this, uh, I, I attempted to repair it basically. I tried to take the LED off and that's not terribly easy because the way they're bonded to these boards. Um, but basically there's six boards around the outside and then they've got these little tabs that go into the top and bottom boards, um, or should I say, the tabs go into the bottom boards, they're just soldered directly into the top board, there's no tabs on the top. Um, so basically if you want to take any of these boards out, you have to take the top off and you have to desolder the bottom. So you have six joints you have to remove, and then the one on the bottom, take the board out, put another board in, and then put the top back on. So if you wanted to repair these, you could do it, um, and that's probably what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the other bulb that I have, um, and because, obviously, because I've ripped this cap off, it's gonna be easier to use the baseboard uh, from the other bulb, and then what I'll do is I'll just take one of these good LED strips out of this board and put it in the other, uh, in the other light bulb, uh, and I should get another, you know, semi war another working one out of that. And basically, I'll just use this as my donor board, and I have five of these um, side boards and one of these top boards that I can replace on the other ones um, until until you know I run out or uh, I stop using these bulbs. I'm not sure. Um, so far, it's not looking great for these in that particular environment. Um, I have these in uh, hallway lights, dining room lights. Uh, and these were all out of a bathroom where it was very humid. So I wonder if if there's uh, if water is playing an issue, um, if there's uh, moisture penetration into the actual um, LED casing themselves, and that's somehow uh, interfering, shorting out, corroding the dye in some way. Um, that would be intriguing. I, I don't really know. Uh, I haven't had a failure in any of the other uh, locations, and. Uh, that it's con conducive that there's something different. Um, it's possible that it has something to do with the number of power cycles because the bathroom, of course, has a lot of on-off 
activity, but it's not on for as long a duration of time, whereas the other lights, they turn on, they're on for a few hours and they're turned off. So uh, because this is a capacitive dropper, uh, of course, there's a, there's a pulse of uh, higher voltage when you turn them on. And there is a limiting resistor. There's the two limiting resistors right here, um, but uh, it is still higher brightness right when you turn them on. So that, that could be affecting it. Could be that high voltage spike that's killing the, the LEDs. Um, it's also possible, it's humidity, it's possible that these warm white LEDs are just, uh, they fail more often than the cool white LEDs because all of the, almost all, I shouldn't say, I have, I have one of these bulbs that's warm white that's not in the bathroom, but all of the other ones are cool white. So it's possible that there's some manufacturing differences. But at this point, I only have two failure points really to look at. So um, I'm gonna just consider this bulb as failed because if I, put, if I fix this and put it back into service, it would fail immediately anyway, because um, of that LED. So I, at this point, I've only got two failure points to look at, so not enough to really draw a conclusion. But of course, I mean, if, if you buy these, don't, don't expect anywhere close to the 30,000 hours. That's complete bullshit. I mean, these LEDs, will not last that long. Even if you cooled them properly and did all that stuff, they're probably not very high quality LEDs. So um, I think the major, I think of the lot of 10 that I bought, I think they will still make their, um, their six month break even point. I definitely think I'll, I'll, you know, at least get my money back, probably save a bit of money, but not as much as what these would over, over a, a full lifespan if they were better made. But then, of course, they would have cost more and their break-even point would have been later. So, again, this is an experiment. So I'm going to keep tallying up their uh, the failure points and, and all that stuff. And uh, I'll, I'll keep updating you as uh, more and more of them fail. And uh, hopefully, by the time most of them have failed, or at least I have five or six data points, uh, I'll publish some statistical results and see uh, see if they really did live up to uh, at least you know the three dollars or something that I paid for each of them uh, but yeah we'll get there when we get there so hopefully that was interesting thanks for watching